I have. Some years passed since I started messing with ByteBeat, and although there is a lot of information available in the internet, only very basic stuff is explained, and most pieces seem more randomly than systematically created. Here I'll explain with more detail some useful expressions so you don't feel as lost as I was. The variable t increases endlessly, but if you write t in your expression you'll notice that the output is a sort of wave. That's because the result of the expression will always be truncated at 255 to avoid undesired behavior and make coding easier. Bit shifting is moving a binary value x places to the right or left. This is like dividing or multiplying by power of 2. This proportion is crucial in music since it's present between octaves and time figures. Therefore, T will work as a rhythmic and melodic fundamental. Bitwise and operator compares two values bit by bit. It returns one where two compared bits are one. The simplest exercise to try different wave shapes is to combine with T. Remember that bitwise logic operators have lower precedence than shifts and mathematical operations. The patterns returned by an AND operation have a power of two length. That's why you notice that the note or pitch is preserved even if you multiply T by an arbitrary value. An interesting thing happens when you introduce lower frequencies. The AND operator never returns a value above the lowest operand. So, the slowest operand will in some way limit the amplitude. You can invert this kind of envelope with a negative T. Exclusive or operator returns one just when one and only one of the compared bits is one. This one is more chaotic than other operators and can be used to shape more distorted waves. Or operator returns one if any of the compared bits is one. It will never return a value below the lowest operand. It can be used to produce distorted shapes too, and it is more or less like the negative of the AND operator. I've said that AND operations produce patterns with powers of two length. If you actually use powers of two as operands you'll get a rect line, a counter. Well, you must rest 1 to the power of 2 to achieve this behavior. Now, if you slow down T, you'll have a rustic sequencer. As long as you control the output, you can make it more complex. If you want to create a more specific sequencer, you can use a value to store the sequence, and then read by shifting it. A binary sequencer would be the easiest one. Here, 172 decimal is read, in binary, from right to left. 10 sets the speed. And 7 limit the steps, the number of bits that will be shifted. And 1 compares the last bit of the resulting value and returns 1 if it's a 1. Now let's build a hexadecimal sequencer. It is basically the same, but we need to move by 4 bits in our shifting, and compare these 4 bits groups together with AND 15. There is a formula you can apply to play with common melodic intervals and scales. And you can simply put a semitone sequencer inside. Byte beat is awesome, and there are still lots and lots of possibilities. I'll leave you with one last tip so you can add some nice percussive effects in your expressions. By now, you should understand how it works. Go on and make your own variations and crazy sounds. Bye.